Good morning. Uh, my name is Ruben Shin. I'm the MIS Fellow from Brigham and Women's Hospital. And this morning, I'll be discussing lapar laparoscopic versus open splenectomy. For splenomegaly, the verdict is unclear. I have no financial disclosures. So laparoscopic splenectomy has become the standard approach for a variety of splenic diseases uh, since it was first um, introduced in the 1990s. Consistent with the benefits of laparoscopic surgery in general, laparoscopic splenectomy is has been shown to be associated with less postoperative pain, shorter length of hospital stay, less intraoperative blood loss, and less morbidity. However, the accepted benefits um, and feasibility of laparoscopic splenectomy has been demonstrated mostly for normal sized spleens. For splenomegaly, that advantage is a little bit less clear. This is likely due to the difficult manipulation of a large spleen, decreased uh, field of operative view, difficult extraction of the large specimen. Some groups have shown the benefits of laparoscopy for large spleens. However, others have reported conflicting data and have cautioned against its use. Therefore, currently there is no consensus existing for the operative approach um, in this patient population. We looked at our institution's um, data experience for the last 20 years for moderate and massive splenomegaly, and we compared laparoscopic versus open splenectomy in these groups. We defined a moderate splenomegaly as a splenic weight of 500 grams to 1,000 grams, and massive splenomegaly as greater than 1,000 grams. Um, we excluded trauma splenectomies, and we excluded hand-assisted laparoscopic splenectomy, also known as HALS. Um, at our initial analysis of our data, we did have a larger amount of bigger spleens in the open splenectomy group. Therefore, we did a one to two matching of the laparoscopic to open splenectomy to control for the splenic weight. Um, as you can see here, we started off with about 491 uh, elective splenectomies, 268 which were done for splenomegaly greater than 500 grams. After our matching, we ended up with 66 in the moderate splenomegaly group and 78 in the massive splenomegaly group. We then, um, the patient characteristics of the moderate splenomegaly group, um, that we had 22 patients in the laparoscopic group and uh, 44 in the open splenectomy group. We had a little bit of a higher um, age in the laparoscopic splenectomy group, otherwise the groups were similar. The massive splenomegaly group, um, where we had 26 in the laparoscopic group, 52 in the open splenectomy group, and um, we had similar um, other factors between the two groups. We then looked at intraoperative factors such as operative time and intraoperative blood loss. We also looked at uh, postoperative outcomes such as length of hospital stay, overall morbidity, infection, thromboembolism, reemission rates, reoperation rates, and mortality. In the moderate splenomegaly group, we found that the laparoscopic splenectomy group had longer operative times uh, at 178 minutes versus 107 minutes. And this is pretty consistent with other um, studies as well. We also had a tendency for a higher intraoperative blood loss. However, this did not reach statistical significance. And the other factors were similar. In the massive splenomegaly group, we also showed that the laparoscopic um, splenectomies took longer than the open splenectomies. Um, and we also had a higher reemission rate within the laparoscopic group. We then did a further analysis comparing laparoscopic splenectomy in the moderate versus the massive splenomegaly group and showed that there was no significant differences in perioperative outcomes. We did have a higher conversion rate in the massive splenomegaly group at a 35% compared to 14% for moderate splenomegaly. However, this did not reach statistical significance. Just to quickly summarize these results, in the moderate splenomegaly group, we did have longer operative times in the laparoscopic splenectomy group. And we did have a tendency for a trend for an increased intraoperative blood loss. However, this was not uh, significant. The massive splenomegaly group, again, had um, higher, uh, longer operative times and a higher reemission rate. And then when comparing laparoscopic splenectomy for moderate versus massive splenomegaly, we did have a higher conversion rate. However, again, this was not statistically significant. We did have some uh, limitations to our study. First, it was a retrospective review. Therefore, there was unavoidable selection biases in some confounders. Um, also, as with other studies using splenic weights, we did have a, like, a study likely had inaccurate measurements of splenic size. So several studies have shown that morselation of the specimen um, significantly underestimates the splenic weight. And however, this is how most specimens are extracted during laparoscopic splenectomy. Preoperative imaging is a more consistent 
um, measure of the spleen size and it's more practical if you're using the spleen size for preoperative guidance for your operative approach. However, this information was not available to us for all of our cases. Um, lastly, intraoperative blood loss may be falsely elevated in laparoscopic splenectomy. This is um, likely due to the fact that um, when morselating the spleen, you uh, suction out the blood from the specimen bag in order to facilitate your extraction of your, uh, of your specimen. And this may inadvertently be counted as intraoperative blood loss despite communication with your anesthesia team and um, nursing. Um, this is in contrast to uh, open splenectomy where you're removing the specimen as a whole um, and the blood con is contained within the specimen. So in conclusion, our study found that laparoscopic splenectomy um, took longer than open splenectomies to perform for moderated massive splenomegaly. Um, there was a trend in the laparoscopic splenectomy to, for increased morbidity. However, um, most of the perioperative fact outcomes were similar to open splenectomy. Laparoscopic splenectomy may be feasible in this patient population. Um, however, we were unable to demonstrate an obvious benefit of this approach. However, we do feel that these findings are evolving. Over recent years, there's been increased utilization of laparoscopy in more and more complex procedures, and there have been significant advances in technology, especially in stapling devices and coagulation devices. Last laparoscopy has been shown, has shown uh, benefit in multiple different um, operations that were once even considered contraindications um, to the approach, and therefore, with increasing experience with advancing lapar uh, lap advanced laparoscopy and the help of better technology and newer technology, we feel that the benefits of laparoscopic splenectomy for splenomegaly will likely be more evident in the future. However, for the time being, the verdict is unclear. Thank you. <laughs>